Hey guys, Josh here, and if you have Steam, you most likely know that the Steam Next Fest is currently going on, giving everybody a chance to try out hundreds of demos for upcoming games. The event is lasting from June 13 to June 20th, so pardon me for being a bit late on the topic, but there's still a whole weekend to enjoy all of these games. So today I would like to talk about a few demos I would recommend trying out the most, and since this is my channel, of course, it will be mostly farming sims and other cozy games. I'll start with an obvious one, if I had to pick just one game to play from this list, it would be Roots of Pacha. The game is currently in closed beta and this is the first time we have a demo open to the public, so it might be the only chance for a lot of people to play this game until it comes out in early access. And I've been playing it since the alpha version last year, and this game just keeps getting better and better every time. In terms of gameplay, it's a pretty standard farming sim where you farm, fish, mine, gather resources and befriend villagers. And there's also no combat, so for me at least, it kind of brings me back to the older Harvest Moon games. It's very peaceful, you can just relax and play without having to worry about dying or anything like that. So it's a very chill experience, and even though it's a pretty standard farming sim in terms of features, everything has a little twist to it so that it integrates with the Stone Age theme of the game. For example, instead of buying seeds at a store, you'll have to find them in the wild, until you discover how to build a plant nursery to make your own seeds. And also the more you grow a certain type of crop, the more knowledge you'll gain about it, and eventually it will become a higher quality domesticated version of that crop. So I really like the progression system in that game, it feels very satisfying and there's a real sense of discovery. And I made a review of the alpha a few months ago, so check that out if you're still undecided. But just know that since then, since I made my review, they already improved on a lot of things. For example, now we can decorate the whole village, not just our fields. They also added more customization options for your characters, such as hats. There's also now an irrigation system that allows you to save time for watering crops. They also improved on the relationships. And there's just so more since I last talked about that game. So I definitely recommend you give it a try. And the demo will let you play the first eight days in game. So it should keep you busy for a few hours. And of course you can redo it as many times as you'd like, and it's gonna be enough for you to enjoy many aspects of what Roots of Pacha has to offer. The second game I definitely recommend you give a try is Potion Permit. In this game you play as a chemist who moves from the capital to a small town, where you have to diagnose and cure the residents when they get ill or injured. To do this, you'll go out and gather ingredients from plants, monsters and more, and then you'll go back to your house where you'll brew some potions. I played the demo for about an hour, I didn't finish everything that was in the demo, so I think you can play maybe for 2 hours in total. And I have to say the brewing mechanics is one of the things I like the most so far about this game. So instead of just selecting a recipe and having it brewed automatically like in most crafting game, every recipe will have a specific shape that you'll have to fill by using different ingredients in a kind of Tetris-like kind of way where every ingredient has a different shape. And what I like about this is that you're not restricted to using very specific ingredients to brew a potion. You can substitute an ingredient by another one with the same shape. So for me at least, it really avoids the frustration of having to collect tons of extremely specific items for each recipe, which happens a lot in crafting games. So I found that a very pleasant mechanic and I'm sure things will get more complex as we progress and unlock more crafting stations and game mechanics. But from what I've experienced so far, this game really doesn't disappoint, not only in terms of gameplay, but also with the graphics, the story, dialogues, the sound effects, the animations, everything just feels very polished, and they put a lot of attention to detail, and I can't wait to play more when the game fully releases sometime later this year. I believe this should be out for Steam as well as Nintendo Switch, but for now, don't miss out the demo. The next game is not really a farming sim, but if you like city builders, and management games like I do, you'll probably be interested in it. So in most games where we get to build stuff, usually it ends up being to the detriment of nature as we cut trees and mine resources, but in Terranil, we're doing the opposite. So we start with a barren wasteland, and our goal is to clean up and reconstruct the ecosystem by placing structures to clean the soil, fill the rivers, plant grass, and then we need to place more elaborate structures that will create different biomes and attract some animals. And once the area is flourishing with flora and fauna, we need to destroy and basically recycle all of the structures that we built 
And with these materials, we make an airship that will allow us to leave the area and rejuvenate the next one. I played it a bit already and I think it's such an interesting twist to the typical city builder kind of game. The main aspect and challenge of this game here is to place the least amount of structures in the most optimal way in order to rejuvenate as much nature as you can and trying to build as less stuff as possible. And the map in the demo will take you between 30 to 60 minutes to complete depending on your pacing and depending on if you fail the first time or not. But it will give you a good idea of the gameplay loop, which I found to be really unique, so I definitely recommend you give it a try. The next game is also not exactly a farming game, but there is some farming, a ton of cute cats, and it's a colony management game inspired by RimWorld and The Sims. I showed an early build of the game sometime last year, you can watch the video if you'd like to see some more gameplay. But keep in mind that since then, the game has evolved a lot, they added a lot of content, fixed tons of bugs, and so in Catizens, you'll recruit cats and manage their needs as they help you gather resources, fight enemies, and build a village. Each cat is unique not only in terms of appearance, but also in personality. They will each have their own unique traits, which might make them, for example, more suitable for a specific job, or more likely to get into a fight with the other cats. Keep in mind that despite its cute appearance, Catizens can also be a bit challenging or even stressful at times, but in a good way. You'll have to make sure your cats are happy or they leave the town and of course they can also die in battle if you're not careful and once they're dead they're just dead permanently and also you'll have to keep an eye on many things at once but i found it really fun if you enjoy rts real-time strategy games or any kind of like colony management city building games you'll most likely enjoy this one as well especially if you're looking for a bit more of a challenge and I have not played the latest demo, so I'm not sure what is included exactly in the demo, but you should get a good feel for what the game is like, so you know whether to buy it or not when it fully releases. You've probably noticed that there are a lot of games with cats recently, but another trend that's getting a lot of traction with farming games for some reason right now is witches. There's just so many games where you play as a witch, and so our next game is Wildflower. And it's a story-driven game where you play as Tara, a witch who just moved to a rural island to help her grandma and the family farm. As you tend to your crops and raise animals, you'll also develop your magic skills, brew potions, and all of these fun witch activities. And it looks like the game will have a magical story filled with mystery, and the 30 diverse characters will all be fully voice acted, which is quite rare to see in farming games. And this really tells me that this game puts some emphasis on the story and the characters. So if you really want something story driven, I think that might be a good choice for you. You'll also be able to choose between seven characters to romance as you get to know them and discover their backstory. So I think this game has a pretty interesting concept. However, I have to be honest, by looking at the gameplay, there are very strong mobile game vibes here. And this is because it was originally an Apple arcade game which is now being ported to Steam and Nintendo Switch. So we can expect an experience that is kind of typical of mobile games. Uh, just keep that in mind. I'll probably end up trying this game at one point in the future. I don't know if I'm gonna try it this week because I'm kind of short on time. And to be honest, I don't think it's really for me, but I still wanted to include it because it is a farming game. You can play the demo right now, so it might be a good chance to try it before you buy it. So if you play it, please let me know what you think of Wildflowers. But now let's jump to our next game. And this one is quite different as well. If you like multiplayer games, there's a good chance you'll want to try Arcane Waters. It's an online game where you play as a pirate, explore the world on your ship, trade with other players, fight both on land and in the sea. And also, of course, you can do some farming. It's actually an MMO, so you'll be able to interact with other players right from the start, even if you don't have any friends. And then, of course, you'll make new friends and you can adventure together. I also played this one for about an hour and I got to pick a layout for my own farm, my own house, which you can also decorate after you buy some furniture. And I did a little bit of farming. And I gotta say, the farming is pretty different than what I'm used to because it's extremely fast paced. So basically, by the time you finish watering your crops, they get thirsty again. So you'll water them just a few times in a row like this until they're ready to harvest in just a few minutes. So I got a bunch of carrots and I wasn't sure what to do with them. I think you need to travel the seas and try to find some village to sell them or maybe you can trade them with other players. 
so I just kept them in my inventory and then I went on my first voyage, which is kind of an instance dungeon. So if you form a party with other players, you're going to be with them, but you're not going to meet random players unless they're in your party. But in my case, I decided to jump in by myself. And I think most of these voyages are divided into two parts. So at least for this one, there was one part at sea where you're on your ship and you have to fight enemies by shooting cannonballs, which was fun. There's lots of different cannonballs. For example, uh, some of them will freeze the enemy ship. Some of them will allow you to shoot many cannonballs at once. And I really like the sea fighting that was fun and then there was another part on land where the combat is actually turn-based but at least at the beginning i have to say the combat system was a bit boring because there was not a lot of strategy involved i just kept pressing the same attacks but it might get a bit better or technical later but i didn't like the combat too much and i actually got stuck during a boss fight where i kept dying and there were no enemies left for me to gain experience so i couldn't get stronger I was just completely stuck and then I got disconnected so I kind of gave up but I think this game has a lot of interesting ideas and just the fact that it's an MMO makes it stand out from the other games on this list so if it sounds appealing to you give it a try and I'll probably give it another chance at some point I think it does have quite a bit of potential. The next game might be the most challenging one in today's list. In Veil of Dust, a story driven survival RPG and farming game you take the role of two siblings in the desert of 1860s Oregon who are building a homestead and just trying to survive. I also played this one last year, I'll put a link to the video. At the time it was a bit rough around the edges, some mechanics were not clear and surviving was extremely difficult. But it seems like a lot has changed since then, such as the addition of a tutorial, balance, fixes, quality of life improvements, the ability to assign chores to your siblings so they actually help you as well as a ton of content. The game also offers different difficulty levels, so you can pick between a more laid back and casual experience or a more challenging survival one. I really like the theme of that game since it's not every day that we have farming sims set in a desert and it really plays into that 1816 desert theme by making resources pretty scarce. You'll also sometimes encounter wild and dangerous animals and you can really feel the struggle of living in that time and place the game also puts an emphasis on the relationship between the two main protagonists and it will evolve as you explore, meet new characters and overall it's just pretty story driven. So if you like character development and an intriguing story, I think you should give it a try. And I have not played the new demo quite yet, but the game is planned to come out in early access this month, so later this month. So in a week or two you can probably expect on my channel a full review of that game or at least a review of the early access. So keep an eye out for that and if you want to try it out by yourself, you still have a few days to play the demo. So farming in the desert is certainly a challenge but it's probably nothing compared to farming on the moon which is what we do in this upcoming game called Moon Farming. I just heard of this game for the first time when the Steam Next Fest started. I have not played it yet but I will certainly do that for an upcoming video. Not only will the farming be different from how it is on Earth, obviously, but this game is also in 3D with a first person perspective, so that also makes it very different from all of the other games on today's list. So as you land on the moon, you'll first have to build a base, install solar panels, and then use different technologies to extract water from the moon and start doing some vertical farming inside your base. And I think you can farm outside as well, I'm not too sure how it works because I've not played the demo yet. But you also have a moon rover vehicle used to explore the moon, however you'll have to be careful and make sure you don't run out of gas. So I think there's going to be some kind of survival aspect to that game. And I think moon farming has a very interesting concept full of potential. It will all depend on how well it is executed. So that's what I'm going to find out when I'm done with this video. I'm just going to go ahead and give that game a try. If you did already play it or if you played any other games included on today's list, please let me know your thoughts in the comments. And that's going to be pretty much it for me today, guys. These are the games I would recommend trying out during the Steam Next Fest if you're into farming sims. Keep in mind that the Steam Next Fest will end on June 20th. Sometimes demos do remain available a little bit after that, but it's not always the case. So I'd recommend playing them as soon as you can. Once again, I'm a little bit sorry that I'm late with this video, but let me know which one is your favorite. Leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this, and I'll see you all in the next video.